Okay. Hello, and thank you for joining Marco's webinar, uh, Technology Solutions for Effective Learning. Uh, whether your organization is face-to-face, -face, blended, or fully remote, technology continues to play an important role in supporting effective learning, learning in the classroom. Throughout the course of the pandemic, Marco has helped many education organizations implement technology to improve the learning environment for students and educators. Today, we look forward to sharing these solutions with you. Um, please use a chat function to ask any questions throughout the presentation, and we'll also have some polls, so interact with us. Uh, before we get started, we'll do a few introductions. My name is Taylor Marks, video, audio and video specialist with Marco. Um, Marco is a full service technology company that helps organizations of all sizes make the most of their voice, data, video, and print technology. Marco takes great pride in our partnerships with some of the top technology leaders in the industry. And joining us today are Tim Beekman with Audio Enhancement, Jim Singh with, My with Mitel, and Tom Tyson with New Line. Through these partnerships, Marco is able to offer state and national contracts to assist with funding, as well as technology solutions that meet the CARES Act, ESSER, and other stimulus funding criteria. Your feedback is important to us, so before we get started, please tell us, what are some instructional challenges you face this year? So we have a lot of awesome information to share with you today. So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce our first guest speaker, Tim Beekman with Audio Enhancement. All right, well, thank you very much for the introduction, Taylor. I am super excited to, to talk to everybody today and I'm only three or four cups of coffee in, so that's pretty good for me. Um, like Taylor mentioned, I'm Tim Beekman with Audio Enhancement. Um, I'm based down in Austin, Texas, um, and have been with Audio Enhancement for seven or, or eight or, uh, eight years here. And so, Taylor, if you wouldn't mind moving things forward for us, there's really kind of four pieces to our to our solution, and uh, we're going to kind of touch on each one of those those pieces um, throughout the presentation today. So, yeah, Taylor, if you could take us forward, um, the first piece is the audio solutions. Um, and this this is largely geared around classroom microphone teacher voice lift, which I think a good portion of today's attendees are familiar with or using. But if you're not, we'll talk about why that's important. The Epic system, which actually integrates that audio system into our paging intercom bell solution. So we'll touch on a little bit of that and some of the cool features related to that system. Our safety alert and security system, um, which stacks on top of the audio systems and give teachers some tools and some resources to call for assistance if they ever need a, a, or are having a problem in the classroom. And then really that fourth piece to this puzzle is ViewPath, which right now uh, dealing with all the pandemic stuff that we've been dealing with is a hugely important tool. Um, and that's really geared or, or focused on cameras in the classroom and how we can leverage them both educationally and from a security perspective in ways teachers are already familiar with. So. So the first thing we'll kind of hit on are, are the audio solutions um, and what they do and why they're important and the impact they have. These are some of the common things that, that we see or, or teachers kind of report to us that they're dealing with, especially right now. So students who are off task, what tools can we implement that are gonna increase engagement, participation? Um, students not hearing instruction clearly, this is obviously a huge deal as we deal with PPE and we'll show you some of that stuff teacher vocal strain, um, and those kind of things. So the first thing I'll kind of hit on, um, for the people who are unfamiliar with classroom microphones and the impact they have in classrooms and the, the importance uh, kind of behind that, is uh, what we run into or what we see generally in a classroom today is right around 18 feet uh, away from the teacher the teacher's voice is becoming competitive or um, competitive with the ambient noise in the classroom. And for anyone who's on this, this meeting and is a, a current educator or a former educator, there's a common terminology that, that's, that's used across the country called teacher voice. And what it is is teachers elevating or projecting their voice um, to compensate for that issue. Um, the, the, the issue behind that though is it's not really a great idea for them to do it, but in order for them to be an effective teacher, 
that's where we're at. And so what a microphone does is it allows teachers to remain that effective, but not have to be reliant on that teacher voice in order to do so. So some of the cool things about audio enhancement um, and, uh, and about addressing those issues is we can do this in a lot of different ways, depending on things like budget and functionality. We can talk about installed and portable solutions. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on here, hopefully as we move, up, move out of this pandemic stuff, is just the impact that PPE has had um, on classrooms. And so what we've done are, are some different studies with, with uh, school districts across the country on the impact that has. I'm sure all of you are, are familiar with, it's tough to hear a waiter who's two, three feet away from you at a restaurant when they're wearing a mask. So when we amplify that across a, a, a classroom that's 30 feet long, this can be a major problem or a major pain point for students, particularly in like the K through eight types of environments. So what's cool about a microphone is that once we implement that on your teacher, not only do we negate the negative impact of the, uh, of the mask or of the face shield, we actually even exceed um, the traditional learning environment with no mask, no microphone. So it's really, really cool. And that's kind of why these have been around for as long as they have and why the research behind them shows the, the impact that they have on student performance and education. So the, the next thing that we're going to talk uh, talk about is our is our safety alert system. And, and like I mentioned earlier, what this is, is a tool for teachers um, built into their classroom microphone to notify the main office, notify administration that they're in need of, a, uh, of some assistance. And so what's what's really cool about this is if I'm a teacher um, and if I have a problem, our system doesn't care where you're located in the building. If you're in our classroom, your classroom, another teacher's classroom, if you're in the hallway, the gym, um, you can press the buttons on either side of these microphone and call your administrators, notifying them where you are in the building. And then ultimately they can respond to whatever that problem is. And here you're seeing an example of, a, of an issue being uh, um, an issue occurring and then the administrator is actually putting the, the building into lockdown based on that, that issue. So um, there's lots of different ways to define this and di di districts use it for different purposes. Um, but it's really, really nice because all of this is largely an automated process. And generally when we roll this feature out, schools, buildings and districts see about a 50 to 60% reduction in their building's emergency response time. So we, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but the other nice thing is because we're talking about network-based solutions, all of this can talk to each other. So, um, and, and Jim will touch on some of this later, but we can integrate all these, all these uh, IP-based systems together. So if we have a safety alert happening from uh, one building and the audio enhancement system, it can trigger buildings you know, down the road or across the districts to do different actions like lockdowns or lockouts. And then everyone's going to receive email and text messages too, which is really important for your principals because we're we're aware they're not always located in the in the main office or 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 at their desk. So the idea that we can reach our responders mobily is really really important. ViewPath is the third kind of component to our solution, and like I said, this this is largely based around our classroom camera and how districts are currently leveraging it for things like remote learning, professional development. And so what ViewPath is at its core um, is, a, is a tool that allows teachers to create content. Then once that content exists, manage that content in an interface and then ultimately deliver it um, to any remote students. And, and what's really cool about this is it can be done in both a live and recorded format, and it can be done through learning management systems um, that districts are already familiar with using. And this slide kind of touches on some of the things I, I was saying here, but as all this pandemic uh, stuff has played out over the last year or so, we're starting to see some Department of Education guidelines, and we're seeing this both at a state and federal level but there's really three main things that we see um, from most places. And the first thing or the first concept 
um, in order to try to do this effectively, whether we're talking about a blended or totally remote environment, is that we want um, the content to be presented in both a live and recorded format for synchronous and asynchronous learning. Of course, ViewPath allows you to do that, which is a really, really great thing. The, the other thing which, is, which was interesting is um, that they really want remote students to feel like in-person students. So we want those remote students to be able to participate. If they have a question, they want them to do more than just ask the question in a Zoom chat to really be counted present. And so what's so cool about our solution and kind of how it's built is that it's more than just a camera. So if I, as a student, have a question, I can ask it and be heard through the audio enhancement speakers that are you know, already installed. And that teacher, no matter where they are in the room, can communicate back with me through the audio enhancement uh, microphone they're wearing. So it's a really nice kind of symbiotic relationship of those two systems that ultimately empowers your staff to you know, respond to some of the, the issues that we're seeing across the country. And then the last kind of thing that we, we commonly see is we really want that content, once it's created, whatever it is, to be distributed via your learning management system. Um, and that's really based around, we want teachers to not have to be tasked with learning another thing that operates in another way. Because we know, especially right now, these people are really overstretched. And so we have to provide tools and platforms that operate um, in ways they're already familiar with. Otherwise, they don't adopt it to the degree that we need them to. Of course, with our system too, there's, there's other things really important. The idea that this content can be created with a mobile device, portable cameras, installed cameras, uh, built-in web cameras, all make it really easy because we know different teachers will leverage the system differently. So again, you've got to give them tools that they're comfortable with or tools that are best suited for their specific classroom in order to make all this work. And then the other thing here that, that really, really matters in terms of adoption among staff um, is the idea that these camera systems behave and act as if uh, as virtual web cameras for all of these kind of live platforms they're already using. So whether it's a WebEx that we're doing now or a Google Hangout or Teams meeting or Zoom, our system can act as the web camera for any of those platforms. And then one other thing I wanted to show a quick screenshot of is our actual lecture capture as well. So it's one thing to have great audio from the teacher microphone and really make sure our remote students can hear the teacher voice clearly. Um, it's another thing to have a great camera to make sure we can really capture uh, what's happening in the classroom. But we also have to make sure that content that's being shared is something our students can see clearly. And so we can actually take a, uh, a lecture capture video and stitch the camera video and whatever they're doing on like Tom's New Line Interactive Flat Panel together and send that video out to our remote students all in one place. And then one thing I like to reinforce a lot of times when we're talking about classroom cameras is right now we all are fixated or, or we're largely fixated on remote learning and how to accomplish that. And that's because of, of the pandemic that we're, we're dealing with. But one of the things I'm challenging a lot of school districts and superintendents and, and uh, directors of technology, principals, those kind of things, is what are you gonna do with these educational tools after the pandemic, right? Um, and so this is a great study that was conducted by Harvard um, with uh, hundreds of teachers from across the country. Um, and it was really about video for self-reflection, right? So record yourself um, and then report back to us what happens when you do that. Um, and what they found is that almost 88% of teachers across, uh, across the country that participated in this study reported that video in the classroom dynamically changed the way they educated their students. And it wasn't that 88% of teachers were ineffective teachers, but it was that 88% of teachers had tendencies they were unaware of until they saw themselves on camera. So teachers were able to see that, realize, hey, I spent 70% of my time on the right side of the room, or I had 65% a, a of the time I called on, on, on male students. And they were able to rectify that um, because they were able to see themselves on film. 
The other thing that, that came out of this was that when teachers were asked to submit recordings um, to, um, to their administrators for an evaluation purpose, um, they were asked to submit five, and on average, teachers recorded themselves 13 times to get to that five. So it really begs the question, why were teachers doing that? Um, and, and what we what was found or what was discovered um, was that if I'm a teacher and I'm recording my lesson for an evaluation purpose, I really want it to be the best version of myself. So teachers would record themselves, self-evaluate their own performance, look at what they could do to improve, do it, and then submit that recording, which as an administrator, how great or cool of an impact is that, um, that we're now getting, we're now empowering our staff to really be the best versions of themselves. And I do think I saw in the chat, there was a question about, um, does ViewPack work with Schoology and Google Classroom? So th the answer is, is yes, absolutely. Um, Schoology allows, uh, as a learning management system, allows for embed codes. Um, so we can actually take our videos, our content, anything within our platform, we automatically create an embed code that allows you to then take it and put it in Schoology. Google Classroom is a little different because it doesn't actually allow for embed codes. So what you can do there though, um, is you can download our videos and upload them into, into Google Classroom. So depending on the LMS you have um, and how they're set up, um, it operates a little bit differently, but our system can work with either or. For our Canvas customers, um, we can actually uh, pull our videos all within the Canvas platform. So it's really, really cool uh, for the guys who have the, that system. The, the last component that I wanna touch on here before I, before I toss it over, I think to, to Jim is our Epic system, which is really kind of the, the cherry on top, so to speak. And so what this is, is our uh, paging intercom bell system. And we're talking about um, one system that is that paging intercom bells that's also that classroom also audio system that's also that safety alert tool so it's really nice about audio enhancement is all this can be scaled um, into one solution so things are simple for for school districts so these are a couple snapshots of what our pa what our intercom what our bell system looks like one thing i like to emphasize here is this is built specifically for education right so the interface is, is a little bit more intuitive than a lot of other, other solutions out there, but everything's map-based and it can of course be managed at a district or school-wide level. Um, it's managed um, by user through roles, so everything's customized, so you only see the things you, you wanna see or that apply to you. Um, but adjusting a bell schedule is something you can do in a matter of seconds. If you need to call a specific classroom, you just click on the, the room on the map and you're calling that room. If you need to page a zone, you can click on the zone you need to be and page it. And then if you need to change how that zone is set up as your building needs change year to year, it's something that can all be done through an interface. So it doesn't require any infrastructure changes in order to, to accomplish or manage that. So one other question I got um, was, how does the microphone work? Is it an earpiece or is it just around the neck? So our, our standard microphone is a lanyard microphone. We have a couple different, uh, couple different kinds. Um, we have handheld microphones. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen them at conferences, you know, when we were doing those, but the uh, throwable microphones. Um, and then we do also have, um, I call them the uh, Taylor mic. Well, I guess Taylor might call them the Britney Spears mics. Um, for some of us, it was the Madonna mics um, that can be worn around in the air. So. Uh, the, this, this slide just kind of details the, uh, how things can be managed at a district level. Um, but again, the thing to emphasize there is all of this can be done from a single place. And another thing that's really cool is it's all browser based. So we're no longer requiring you to go to that special machine, you know, in the admin area or, or in the IDF to make adjustments to the system or manage that. And then before I wrap up here, this just shows some of the integration possibilities with this type of solution. So if you need your fire alarm to trigger actions over the PA system, you can do that. If we need to tie in, you know, a Mitel phone system um, so that calls are happening between our system and theirs, you can absolutely do that. Door access control. So if we do have a, a lockdown situation, we can send commands to the, the door access system and tell it to close and lock. So there's lots of things that you can do once all of this is put on the network.
So I think that's my time. I hope I'm still on track, Taylor. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to send them in the chat now, um, or I'm hanging out and we can uh, you know, address them at the end. Awesome, thank you, Tim. Yeah, I think we should have a couple minutes at the end here to answer questions. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of information and guest speakers to fit in today. Um, so we're gonna move along with our next speaker. Um, we're going to introduce Jim Seng with Mitel. Yeah, thanks so much for the introduction, Taylor. <clears throat> I appreciate uh, the partnership that we have with Marco. And uh, to just tell you a little bit about Mitel, uh, Mitel's uh, getting ready to celebrate their 50 year birthday. Um, so we have been a market leader in unified communications. And unified communications means a lot of things to a lot of different organizations. but. Basically, it's tying all forms of communication, all modes of communication, whether it's a voice call, whether it's a, an instant message, a, a video call, a tying unified messaging together. So voicemail to email um, and a lot of other elements um, that make up what is called unified communications. So what I want to talk to you today about is how Mitel help how Mitel and Marco help uh, K12 customers succeed uh, with being able to deliver a rich unified communications experience and how some of the products that we have manufactured uh, can accommodate uh, K12 school districts uh, predominantly in the time of a pandemic. So. You know, if we look from left to right, um, you know, Mitel has a strong suite of unified communications and collaboration applications within our portfolio. Um, so whether it's, um, you know, video conferencing or video collaboration all the way through, you know, remote teleworker solutions, uh, these are capabilities that Mitel has been able to deliver with Marco uh, to enhance a school district's workforce. Um, for example, you know, once the pandemic uh, hit early last year, there were a lot of school districts that, um, you know, immediately went into a remote learning type of environment. And with remote learning, um, there's a whole different level of tools and applications that a district administrator or an IT manager need to provide, you know, the, you know, the staff um, and the, the faculty to be able to work from home. So whether it's allowing them to take a IP telephone with them and bring it home and plug it into their internet service provider network, uh, give them a, a headset of some sort, and then they can make and take calls uh, such they were in the office um, that would be, you know, one way of doing it. There's other types of capabilities that we'll talk about, including soft phone technology. So being able to leverage a piece of software on a teacher's computer uh, to be able to make calls through that computer and show the phone number of the school district, for example, instead of, you know, having that teacher um, use their personal cell phone, for example, to call a, a parent or uh, somebody else, uh, you know, within the school district, um, you know, Mitel's also been very um, uh, prominent in being able to deliver uh, safety and security solutions uh, to school districts. Um, you know, we've partnered with, and we do work with audio enhancements. So the ability to be able to tie uh, some of the Epic system portfolio into a Mitel phone system is a very powerful value proposition and can round out a school district's emergency communication plan. Um, a lot of cases um, when I'm talking to a school district administrator or an IT manager and we start going through their emergency communication plan, for example, you know, if I'm sitting in a conference room or a classroom with an administrator and I look at the phone sitting on the desk or hanging off the wall, I might ask a question, uh, you know, what happens when that phone goes off hook and dials 911? What type of information is being delivered to the local, um, you know, public safety answering point, for example? And you'll be surprised at how many administrators 
they, they, they don't know the answer. They don't know if it's, if it's showing the main listed number of the elementary school or whether it's a, more of a, a granular phone number that identifies a specific classroom within a specific building. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about safety and security um, and then mobility, right? Mobility, mobility, mobility. You know, work is not a place you go to anymore. It's it's a thing you do, right? And being able to um, communicate from either a classroom, um, an administration building, uh, you know, a cafeteria, a whole teacher's home, for example, uh, and being able to leverage applications like the Mitel soft phone suite or the Mitel mobile application allow teachers to be more nimble, um, you know, and uh, faculty to be able to be more responsive to, you know, students and, and parents' needs. So to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about the Mitel, <clears throat> uh, My Voice business portfolio, uh, what we're looking at right here is something called Mitel My Collab. And what My Collab is, um, it's a whole suite of uh, tools uh, that empower um, a user to become more productive, um, you know, in a remote learning environment, for example. So uh, MyCollab uh, is a piece of software uh, that can be installed on a Windows laptop. It can be installed on a MacBook, for example. Um, we could also um, install these types of capabilities on a Chromebook, for example. But you know, with this piece of software, um, this would be called the Unified Communications Desktop Client, and being able to allow this client or this piece of software to be able to make calls and receive calls through their computer, for example, um, you could also you know instant message somebody within the organization. So, for example, if I'm a teacher and um, I need to talk to uh, somebody within a, another school. I could open up this client, for example, and uh, be able to identify if that person is available um, through presence delivery. They may be on the phone. Um, they may actually have a do not disturb a presence uh, signature <clears throat> within their client. Uh, I can communicate more efficiently and more effectively, um, you know, with that individual. Um, you know, other things um, that uh, the unified communications client can do is it can integrate with uh, calendaring. So whether it's, uh, you know, a Microsoft um, Office 365 type of uh, uh, organization using Microsoft, um, you know, Outlook calendaring, or even Google and G Suite, we have the ability to be able to tie into those um, you know, collaboration and email platforms. And for example, if a teacher um, has her calendar set um, to do not disturb from, you know, eight o'clock in the morning to two in the afternoon as she is teaching class, then the presence on her unified communications client will also turn on do not disturb. So being able to integrate the calendar, you know, with um, some of the communication workflows has been very uh, popular and, and powerful in K-12 uh, organizations. Um, the one thing about this um, Mitel MyCollab client is um, it's allowed, um, you know, K-12 organizations to be nimble in the response of a pandemic, to be able to send a whole organization of teachers and faculty home, you know, in a matter of a day and allowing them to work from home such that they were literally sitting in the classroom um, you know, a lot of K-12 uh, organizations have been able to leverage uh, CARES Act funding to be able to pay for uh, software technology like this. This is the Mitel MyCollab mobile. So again, it's uh, an extension of the desktop client. It's a piece of software that can be installed on an iPhone uh, or an Android, it, it could even be installed on, a, on an iOS tablet, for example, but ultimately it does a lot of the same types of functionality and communication capability as the desktop client. I'd like to say that um, this piece of software turns your smartphone into your desk phone. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing for everybody on this call. A lot of people, you know, when it's time to go, it's time to go. I'm leaving school. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up my kids. I'm going to walk my dogs and I want a three hour break, right? Well, with a piece of software like this on a mobile phone, you can be tied to work 24 by 7, 365 days a year. And then you can also go ahead and set, you know, the certain parameters um, again within your calendar. This information will flow through uh, from your Outlook or you know, Gmail calendar suite, for example, to be able to turn on and off presence. It also allows you to be able to leverage a wireless network, for example, um, and um, and be able to make a call to a parent from your personal smartphone through this piece of software and show the school district phone number. So again, you might be walking in Walmart, you're doing a little shopping um, and a parent calls your DID number. If you're a teacher and you do have a 10 digit number, that call can ring in on that mobile phone. The teacher would see that that's a business call coming in and then they could answer that call accordingly. Hi, this is, um, you know, teach us Sarah Wilson, you know, how can I help you today? Or when they make an outbound call, again, it looks like you're sitting in the school district office, for example. One of the things that Mitel is very proud of is uh, an award-winning portfolio of IP telephones for a number of years. And uh, and this is, um, you know, a further enhancement of our IP telephone portfolio. Um, so we've introduced the, the first of its kind antimicrobial IP telephones. And so we've got two models today. We've got a 6920, which is more of a, you know, a basic uh, classroom uh, area telephone. And then we also have a 6930, which is a, a little bit of a higher end um, feature and functionality. It's got Bluetooth capabilities um, and some additional enhancements. Uh, and they're mostly used for knowledge workers, administrators, and receptionists. But these IP telephones um, have been built with the plastics um, that have been coated um, with a silver lining technology from a company called BioCoat. So it's a patented technology, and uh, with this patented technology on these IP telephones, it either prevents or reduces the transmission of viruses like COVID-19 by over 99%. So for, you know, for school districts that, you know, have common areas like classrooms where you might have three or four different teachers in the classroom and, you know, maybe the teachers aren't using classroom telephones, but other areas like the cafeteria, the break room, the lunch room, the front desk, where you might have a different front desk person every day, people, multiple people that are touching telephones, handling telephones to be able to have a product like this has been uh, very popular uh, within K-12 organizations. And again, Every technology um, that I'm talking about today and I'm showing you today, uh, Marco and Mitel have been successful with selling this technology into K-12 organizations and K-12 organizations have been successful leveraging a CARES Act and ESSER funding to be able to purchase these types of products and technologies. This is our video collaboration suite. Um, this is called the uh, My Team Meetings. Um, so it's a remote learning uh, delivery platform. Um, it's very similar to a lot of the other products that you're looking at or you're seeing out there today, um, whether it's Google Hangouts, WebEx, Microsoft Teams, um, you know, Zoom. <clears throat> so this is, um, you know, this is Mitel's version of a video collaboration platform. Um, so this is a, a cloud-based video collaboration suite. Um, it's based on um, um, Amazon technology. Um, so, uh, you know, we're partnered with some of the top uh, global technologists in the world, whether it's Google, uh, whether it's Amazon, or, you know, whether it's Microsoft, for example, but being able to leverage this technology to be able to deliver or provide remote learning um, you know, these are other cases where if a school district has the licensing set up um, for this type of technology uh, to be able to send 
um, an administrator or a teacher home, you know, for example, you know, um, you might have a school district that is back to in person learning, but then all of a sudden, um, you know, a kid tests uh, positive for COVID 19. And so, you know, at that point, there's a whole level of protocol that needs to be, um, you know, delivered through, you know, through email to all the parents. I mean, I get the emails all the time. I still have a daughter who's uh, a senior in high school. And then with that, um, you know, the teacher or the educator also needs to self quarantine as well. So they may need to, you know, stay home for the next couple of weeks um, while, while they're self quarantining. Using products like uh, my tell my team meetings to be able to deliver, um, you know, remote content to a classroom, for example, um, or other teachers or administrators within their school district has provided um, um, as a very powerful value proposition. Um, I do have a couple more slides and um, I'll just briefly go over uh, my tell revolution. It's an advanced application suite um, that um, is delivered by Mitel. It also works in conjunction with the EPIC system. Um, so it can help uh, round out um, a school district's emergency communication plan. <clears throat> this piece of software ties into the Mitel phone system or the Mitel PBX and can allow um, you know, the teachers or faculty to be able to deliver um, you know, a mass notification message, you know, through the press of a button. So, you know, literally if there's a receptionist um, that manages the front door of the, you know, middle school, for example, you know, everybody has to go through the front door. Everybody has to show their driver's license. Um, everybody has to sign in, for example. But if all of a sudden there's a suspicious person that, you know, walks right by the, you know, the sign in protocol, um, you know, a administrator can press a button on a telephone and activate a series of events uh, tied into the epic system for example and send messages over you know the overhead paging system it can send a page to you know hundreds of telephones for example so it can be an audio page that's delivered over a mitel telephone you know active shooter alert we're in a code red 123 protocol and only the teachers and you know the administrator and staff know what that code red one two three protocol is, but being able to you know verbalize it across you know overhead paging, uh, across uh, computer desktops through a screen pop, uh, through a mobile notification notification, we could even deliver some type of notification to all the parents within a school district if the parents opt in through um, you know through the sign up. Uh, protocol. Um, it's all browser based. So when a, a child gets enrolled in school, you know, part of the protocol could be is that if they want to opt in for mass notification, they just click on this link, they go to this website, they enter their um, their phone numbers that they want to be notified at along with, um, you know, um, their cell phone number, and then, you know, those parents can be notified. The other thing that Mito Revolution does is it um, allows um, uh, a 911 call to deliver any type of notification to a school resource officer. The 911 call is still going to be routed out a local um, telephone system trunk to the local PSAP or emergency, um, you know, response group. But maybe we need to send an SMS text to the school resource officer, uh, the district administrator, and the principal when a 911 call is placed. So these are some of the capabilities that Mitel Revolution can deliver. Uh, we can integrate um, at an IoT sensor level, a contact closure level uh, through networking, you know, IP address mapping and routing uh, to be able to integrate to, you know, to the EPIC system and be able to also do things like uh, press a button on a telephone integrate with the EPIC system and open a door or lock down a door or lock down a whole school or activate them, you know, school districts are now putting vape sensors in their bathrooms. So if a vape sensor was to go off because you've got a kid that's doing something they're not supposed to do in the bathroom, that vape sensor can integrate into the Mitel Revolution and Epic system platform and, you know, and ring um, a school resource officer's mobile phone, for example.
Um, I just want to talk briefly about SourceWell. SourceWell is a, is a government purchasing cooperative. Um, it's a government uh, agency that's um, widely recognized. Um, and there's over 70,000 members um, within the SourceWell government purchasing cooperative. Uh, it doesn't cost anything for a school district to sign up as a member. Um, they'll go into the SourceWell website. Um, it takes them about 10 minutes to sign up to get a member ID. And once they have a member ID, they have the ability and opportunity to purchase uh, products or services from over 375 qualified vendors. And when I say qualified vendors, um, the qualified vendors have met a competitive RFP bid process to be a qualified vendor. So SourceWell has vetted out uh, these vendor suppliers. You've got companies like uh, Staples, and that's a vendor supplier. Uh, John Deere's on that list. Caterpillar's on that list. And Mitel is the ex exclusive unified communications vendor supplier um, on the SourceWell uh, government purchasing cooperative. So Marco and Mitel have done a lot of business with school districts where the school district opts to use uh, the competitive uh, pricing uh, from SourceWell. And the nice thing about SourceWell is that um, a school district administrator that buys a telephone from Marco off of SourceWell, they know a year from now when they wanna buy that same telephone, they know exactly what that price is. So it's already been competitively bid um, and negotiated on. And um, this is a very powerful contract that a lot of school district um, IT managers and administrators like to use to be able to procure technology from Mitel, for example. Awesome, thank you so much, Jim. I'm just taking a look at the clock here and I wanna make sure that we have time for our last presenter, um, New Line. So we're gonna transfer over and I would like to introduce Tom Tyson and I believe Ellen Connor is going to be joining him today as well. Thank you, Taylor. Good afternoon, everybody. I know we're in the home stretch here, so we'll try to uh, try to get through this for you, and you can go have a sandwich and get on with your day. So uh, <laughs> thanks for being on here with us. Uh, Tom Tyson here from New Line. Uh, Taylor mentioned Ellen. He, she is our resource here in the Central, also a former educator, so a great resource to have uh, when it comes to applications in the classroom. So I know we've talked a lot about collaboration on this call. Uh, we're gonna kind of continue that discussion, but more on the visual side. Um, Tim and Jim did a great job talking about audio and you know how that can enhance uh, the different classroom situations. But uh, New Line is a, a display manufacturer. So we primarily focus uh, on the interactive side. So interactive flat panels, we also have a line of non-touch displays, which we'll get into in a couple of slides, but uh, a couple of things to just kind of hone in about our product line. Um, simplicity and, and ease of use is really kind of our, our, our core competency. So when we have a customer that purchases our product, purchases our product, we are, we want them to use it. We don't want them sitting in the corner and there, and, and then teachers are just using their standard um, acrylic whiteboard, uh, and they're kind of just going on with their day. So we we are passionate about our product. We want customers to use it. Um, another great feature for us is uh, the non-proprietary aspect of our products. Uh, what that means is we're not going to box you into any specific software, hardware. Obviously, our display is the hardware. Um, but you know, if you're using a specific um, if you're if you're a Windows environment, if you're a Mac house, if you use Google, uh, if you're using WebEx like we're doing today, that doesn't matter for New Line. So we're gonna live in your environment. We're not gonna make you live in ours, which is a great uh, feature for us. You know, I think uh, we've been talking a lot about distance learning today. Um, that's really no different for our our products, right? Obviously, teachers are still in the classroom teaching, whether they're uh, hybrid or remote. Um, so our products really give the, the teachers that ability to keep those remote students uh, engaged with their annotation um, that they're doing live in person in the classroom. Um, and we'll get into the products here next. 
So this is kind of our main uh, our main product set. So these are all displays. Um, I mentioned a non touch display, which is uh, to my right here, the NT. So we have a, a, a line of non touch. The rest of our, our products are on the interactive side. Um, so all 4K, all 4K displays uh, sizes range from 65 inches all the way up to 86 inches. Uh, again, they, they all come feature rich with wireless casting. Um, there's also some remote management um, software that comes included. So if you have a if you have multiple displays in your environment, you can remotely manage them from a URL, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, again, compatible with all different platforms. You can see Apple, uh, Android, Windows, uh, the whole nine. So really kind of make it really, really easy for any type of environment to integrate with with New Line. Um, and then just kind of rounding out our product line. So obviously we are a display company at our at our core, um, but here's some of uh, the other accessories that you can add on to kind of complete the solution. So starting at the right, you know, different mounting solutions. Uh, we offer flat mounts uh, for a wall, mobile solutions. So if you're moving from different room to room, uh, we have that option as well. Um, you can also turn the our displays into a giant Chromebook uh, with our Chromebox. So if you if you need access to the Google Play Store. Um, and you're using a lot of Google applications, uh, the Chromebox could just slot into the, the back of the display and you have a giant Chromebook um, operating in the front of the classroom. Um, our OPS computer is a onboard computer, um, which again would turn your new line display into a full Windows PC. Um, so these are all options um, out of the box. It comes with an Android operating system, so you can you can do a lot of the whiteboarding features right out of the box, but if you want kind of some some more functionality um, of the display, you know, I would recommend, you know, adding a an onboard computer. Uh, and then also uh, we have webcams as well. So webcams to kind of complete the solution to make a full video conferencing option. Um, and then last but not least, we also just recently came out with a desktop display. So uh, this is our flex unit. It's a 27 inch full uh, 4K touch display with cameras and microphones integrated. So it's really a nice option uh, for the teacher in the front of the classroom, uh, in addition to uh, whether it be a projector or a, um, you know, an interactive flat panel in the front. So there's a little thing called CARES Act. You guys probably never heard of it before. Uh, it's brand new, just kidding. Uh, joke. Um, but this is just kind of a summary of, of some of the stimulus funding available to you all. Um, and the, the great news is that is, is new line products are, are eligible for CARES Act spending. So um, if you have any projects, certainly engage the Marco team. We're happy to jump on any demonstrations. Um, so we, we do a lot of virtual demos for, for schools and universities. Uh, just to kind of see so they can see the basic functionality of the displays um, and really kind of get a, a better sense of new line and, and how we can uh, help in their environment. I'm going to turn it over to Ellen for the next couple. All right, thanks, Bob. So the most popular panel that we have at New Line is actually the RS Plus series. I know Tom did a, a little uh, overview of it. But this display is most popular because it is used in higher ed or higher ed, but also in K-12. Just overall functionality is really works in the education space. So built into the panel, we have a really enhanced whiteboard. It's something that we try to kind of model after some of the aspects of Google Jamboard as well as Microsoft Whiteboard. So integrated into it, we have something called object recognition where the whiteboard will respond to the action I'm trying to take. So if I have a thin tipped object like a stylus or a, a mechanical pencil, anything thin, it will recognize that I want to write. If I want to erase, I just use the back of my hand. You just ball it up like a fist. And then if I want to use an infinite canvas or move images and text around, I just use my finger. So it really makes it easy for an instructor and a student to be able to get up and use the panel because they're not focused on finding the special stylus that they misplaced. I know I often did. 
And that whiteboard, it also has the ability for the teachers to log into their Google Drive and actually be able to add content, content to the panel, but also get that content back over to their Google Drive to be able to share with students later on. We also have wireless casting that's built into the display. This is a cloud based wireless casting solution. This is a little bit different than some of the other solutions that are out there. Since it's cloud based, the panel may be on one network, but my student that's sitting in the classroom is on another one and they have the ability to communicate and share their content onto the display. And that is included with the display, whether anyone uses it or not. But that can be used with Windows devices, MacBooks, Chromebooks, tablets, and phones. Any of those can work with it um, pretty flawlessly there. And then lastly, we do have our remote display management. So a lot of schools doing large deployments. IT does not want to walk to each individual classroom to you know, update settings or change settings, remote in to the display. So we provide for free access to New Line Display Management, the portal. You pair your displays in there. And from there, you can send out, like I've mentioned, emergency notifications, simple text messages, can remote into the display. You can add applications to the display from the display management, as well as provide remote support as well, actually being able to go in and control the display uh, from the portal. And again, that's going to be cloud based. You could be on vacation if you wanted to and be able to provide support to the panel. And again, that's going to be included with the display. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one there. And then here we have just a classroom in a box, basically everything you would need for hybrid learning. You know, hopefully we get back to what we quote unquote called normal classrooms there. But you'll see that we have the RS series. This is great for any type of in-class or hybrid online instruction. You will see here that we have the Tango camera. This is a 1080p camera that can be placed both on the display, but also could be put on a tripod or just even a teacher's computer to be able to pick up their uh, audio as well as the video there. And that does have a USB connection. Now, we also have over here, you can see the OPS computer. As Tom mentioned, it runs Windows 10. There's actually a slot in the display that you slide that into. And we like to say that it makes the panel and the computer an all-in-one solution. This is great because teacher then has their laptop free for them to be able to do everything more admin-based, you know, grades, and attendance, things like that, where the onboard computer is going to control everything curriculum based. And so you can keep those things kind of separate there. And then last, we have the mobile stand. It's nice and easy to be able to move, you know, displays to different environments. You know, if class sizes have to get smaller, if this keeps on going on, then you can move those around to any environment and be able to, to still instruct, which is the, the focus there. And then here, this is just a success story. Uh, we have here with New Line at Grapeville, Grapevine Colleyville, based here in, in Dallas area. They actually have been implementing the hybrid learning since uh, we started school back here. They are using WebEx as their uh, video conferencing platform. You can see that they have an RS series here in the background. But then they also have a camera that's mounted from the ceiling and they're able to, as you can see, all the, the students there on WebEx and the students in the classroom being able to participate. Um, and the teacher is able to move around like they normally would and be able to capture the real classroom environment that we're trying to, to emulate there. And then here's just a, another successful story. So. We have a, a blogger, his name is Nick Provenzano. He's the nerdy teacher and he actually runs his own uh, makerspace in his school. And he has multiple new line displays here. He's actually using the new line flex. As Tom mentioned, that's our desktop solution. So he actually, you can read here, he's able to head kind of towards the back of uh, behind his display and able to create create um, content while his students are able to see that just from the, the desktop solution. So he doesn't necessarily have to be 
on the display, the large format display to instruct. That 4K camera on top there will capture all of that. And as you can see, or maybe you can tell, um, he is actually running Microsoft Teams. So Teams, Zoom, WebEx, all of those can be used on our displays as well. Just need to have a computer connected for that. And then lastly here, just kind of going over the fact that teachers love New Line. Just the fact it's it's simple. You know, you as far as training goes, we always provide training for free. I did that for two and a half years. And it's amazing once we get in front of teachers how well they're able to implement the display, but also just get excited about the new ideas that they can have. It's never really a question of can the display take the content that I've researched and found out and be able to use in the classroom. You know, if you can do it on a computer, you can do it on the display. So here's just an example of a couple of uh, successful stories that we have at Newline, and we're always happy to give references as 